Hello, plant friends. I hope you guys are all keeping well and happy. This episode is going to be about the philodendron varicosum, but I'm not going to be the one talking. So I recently reached out to Facebook and Instagram, and I asked people to share and send me clips of their plant. And wow, I got such an amazing, amazing response. Some people on Facebook and Instagram who are not YouTubers, who are not used to be on, being on camera, sent me clips, care videos um, about, you know, their plant. Like they, <laughs> they really stepped out of their comfort zone to, to share their plant with you guys. So I really hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hi everyone, this is Jeannie from Plant Hall. Thanks so much, Jimmy, for letting me be a part of your video. I just wanted to show off my philodendron varicosum, which I absolutely love. I love the way this one is kind of growing. It branches out into this explosion of velvety, luscious green leaves. Um, it's a little tore up, but it is in much better condition now that I have it growing in hydroclayton balls, otherwise known as LECA. I have it in a glass vase with no drainage holes and I just fill up the bottom quarter of an inch with nutrient-rich water solution. And I just make sure that that's full probably once a week. Um, I also have it growing under a grow light in my office at about 50 to 60% humidity. So it has acclimatized. Um, I did receive it from Ecuador about six months ago, and it did go through a bit of transplant shock when it first arrived and lost a bunch of leaves, but it's since pushed out three new leaves and about to unfurl a new one. So it's doing pretty well. I'm very happy with the way that it's Growing, I would say that this plant is very sensitive to shipping. Um, so just buyer beware. I do have a bunch of smaller varicosums also growing in my biopod, which is like a self-contained ecosystem that is controlled by an app where I can control basically the lighting, the humidity, the temperature, the irrigation, the misting of the water. Um, I have a bunch of my kind of rarer plants propagating in here. And I find that the varicosum does really, really, really well. It is almost a weed. I can take a cutting and it will root in a no joke a week. And the plant that I took the cutting from will grow a new shoot in about the same amount of time. So it's really interesting. Um, in the back there, you can see a philodendron majestic, which is a hybrid of the varicosum and the sodori. And I find that its growth habit is just like a varicosum. It does really well in this environment um, as well. So if anyone wants to see really rapid growth on their varicosum it may not be the biggest leaves out there but it is shocking at how fast it is growing i do recommend a vivarium or polydarium to grow your plants in anyways that's my video thanks for listening feel free to check out my instagram at plant hall bye everyone Hi guys, my name is Brian and my Instagram is b.chan, C-H-A-N, 4. I am uh, an, a very new Aroid collector. I've been collecting since about a year. I originally come from Malaysia and um, because I miss home so much and I really want to bring a piece of Malaysia here, I decided to create my own jungle in a greenhouse. And uh, as you can see, um, my collection has gone a bit out of hand, but I love it every day waking up to it. It makes me so happy. Um, first thing to start the day instead of coffee, all my plants. So I would like to thank Jimmy for this opportunity to share my plant varicosum with the world. I have a couple of versions. And um, for some of you who don't know, 
Varicosum is one of my first plants that I've ever gotten and this is basically one of the first few plants I got. It came actually with as a one leaf and basically it started to drop and die and warp and I was really upset but a friend told me why don't you chop it up in pieces, um, seal it with cinnamon and just wait for it to root and it did, it did. And so one of the smaller ones that end up rooting is here, this one. And um, I'm very happy with it, although it has taken so long. The growth is super slow as a baby, but it's doing pretty well. And I, I think if I would mount it on a pole, it will do super well now. And then, the original plant that came, it dropped off all its leaves, but then it continued on to grow. And it went from really small leaves to slightly bigger leaves. And then now it's going through its kind of juvenile stage where you can really see the beautiful coloring of it coming. And it's getting hairier and hairier at the back as well. But with this plant, you really, really need to mount it on a pole because um, the stems are quite soft and if you don't, they just kind of cave in, they kind of dip and fall around. So I would really suggest you to mount it on a pole. And um, last January, um, I had the opportunity to basically own a big specimen and I was very happy to get this. And um, so this is basically the specimen that I got. It's a very huge plant. And I love the foliage. It came with three leaves, uh, two of them dropped, but just look at it. I mean, now it has one, two, three, four, five leaves. And um, here, if you look at the back of the leaves, like this one is obviously a bit more juvenile. The coloring is still not quite there, but as you see, it changes. It gets so red and so dark and all this marbling is just absolutely stunning. So one of the things that happened actually during this time was that um, I broke the stem and this was actually the top. And so what happened was I decided to just put in water and try to root it. And now it has rooted itself and it has shown really good growth. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to actually put it into soil, but I just keep rooting it till it gets there and same thing, just absolutely beautiful. This plant itself has really given me no problems whatsoever. Very easy, you can overwater it a little bit, underwater it a little bit. It's very forgiving and it grows relatively well if you give it good conditions. But obviously I have special conditions where I'm growing it inside a greenhouse and that's obviously quite different, but um, I think definitely this could be um, a, a starter plan for a lot of people, you know? So I hope you guys enjoyed my collection and my varicosums here. And um, good luck to Jimmy and have fun. So here are my varicosums. And for the most part, they really don't ship well when they come in. I do have to let them sit at least a couple of months. Most of the time they lose all the leaves that they come with and I have to let them grow a few fresh leaves before I'm able to sell them. Uh, area roots, most likely I'll be cutting this one and propagating. And then um, to me, they root very easy, so I just take a cutting, remove the leaves, like I'll, I would remove this one here, and just keep one leaf, if so, and then I would just stick it in my uh, mix, my arrow mix. Nothing special, nothing fancy. I really don't do anything special or fancy to my um, cuttings. I would just... like this, stick it in, and believe it or not, I get over 90% success with this method. I would go back later after I'm done with this clip 
and uh, push it in some more. I do have seedlings, as you can see here, and some more. These look better. And uh, a lot of times I'll just take cuttings and propagate and make more. They're very super easy to root. I sell them as cuttings, I sell them as rooted, and uh, many of my customers had great success rooting the cuttings of some of them. To me, rooting these is super easy. I don't do anything special to it. I just take a cutting, take a couple leaves off, and stick the cutting in my uh, growing medium. I don't really do anything special to it. Um, once I stick it in, I cover it with moss, <clears throat> and then I just let it grow. I let it root. Let the plant do its thing. That's it. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode so far. Remember, these these people who are sharing these plants with you guys are are not you know, editors or film people or YouTubers, they're just common, passionate plant hobbyists, right? So they really stepped it up and stepped out of their comfort zone to share their passion, their joys with you guys. If you guys like it, definitely give them a follow um, on their Instagram. And, and also, if you guys want to share some plants or share anything uh, on this channel, just reach out to me and send me clips and if i can if i can make it work out i will definitely share it and tag you guys so um yeah <laughs> hi everybody my name's selena this is my desk and these are my philodendron varicosum so there's there's three plants um and i got these three last summer as cuttings i've been growing them out they're doing pretty well and then I forgot to water them for like three weeks, so they dried up. And the issue was with my substrate because even though my humidity is it's like 80%, um, that dried out, so they just really suffered. They dropped a bunch of their leaves and even the remains of the tip cuttings are very crispy. Like, oops, oh my goodness. Yeah, so I actually should just remove most of these leaves. Um, these are just in water for now until I remove the leaves because I didn't want them to like rot if they were in the substrate. But these rooted bottoms are in a mix of cocoa coir and uh, perlite. These mid stem cuttings are in just damp um, cocoa coir, and I keep this box closed. And it really does help a lot. Um, this one is just a box of very, very wet sphagnum. And I keep it closed most of the time as well. Here, um, my little prop station. Um, but yeah, so in here I do have this one stem. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is, uh, but it is a varicosum. And I did make it drop all its leaves, but it's been in here for about like two or three weeks and it's starting to grow little roots again so we'll see what that is and then this one this is one of my first ones that i got maybe even earlier in the summer than those three larger ones and i got it as a single node wet stick um and at the time it was like relatively affordable i just wanted to try it out because of the high humidity requirements i haven't always had 80 percent humidity so um, this is what's grown, and I need to pot it up soon for sure, but I think it's doing pretty well. Um, where I am in Pennsylvania, winters are like pretty long and cold, so everything's been growing slowly up until then. And I also have two, uh, varicosum hybrids, so this is the first one, a little baby. Um, it's a cross between varicosum and soderoy, so... It's called Majestic is the cultivar name. Super pretty. It's got those like shimmery flecks from the Sotoroy and then a little velvet texture from the varicosum, I guess. And then I have this big guy. So this is my Philodendron Melanochrysum and Varicosum cross. Um, 
also called Splendid. And when I first got this last fall, it was, it was literally like, like this tall, like, like literally just the size of my hand. And it was recently imported, so it dropped all its leaves. So these five leaves, um, it's grown with me and it's just really thriving. It's actually, in my opinion, my easiest plant. So it didn't really mind when my humidity was lower. It's pretty resistant to pests. A few uh, spider mite nibbles here and there, but I've really got it down. There's not a single spider mite spot on this newest leaf, so I'm really happy with it. You should definitely get one if you want a varicosum looking plant, but you can't um, guarantee the high humidity requirements. Like it's so happy and easy going. All right, thanks everybody. I uh, can't wait to see what everyone else has. All right, bye. This is my philodendron corner and I have two philodendron varicosum cuttings. I found both of these cuttings on Etsy and this one here is a lot more established. I'm going to be potting this one soon. And then this one here needs a little bit more time. I try to pot it up too quickly. They're right next to a south facing window, but there's a large tree right in front. So there's not, it's not like too sunny. Right now you can see in the background, the temperature and the humidity. I'm actually raising the humidity as we speak so that it's around 60 at least for these. And right now I just have my rooted cuttings in these uh, green apothecary jars so that they continue to root and and grow. And cause this is my, my first sort of experience with this plant and I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me be a part of the Plants of Instagram varicosum. Can't wait to see everybody else's, I'm so excited. Hey Jimmy, this is Lena from Understories on Instagram and here on YouTube, and I just wanted to send you a few clips of my philodendron varicosum dark form. I got this little plant recently from a seller named Brian, also known as Asian Epiphytes, on Etsy. So this one's still pretty small, but I'm excited to watch it mature and develop that strikingly dark foliage that it's known for. And unfortunately, I had a little bit of a mishap with it recently. One of the developing leaves snapped as it was trying to come out of its sheath, which is really sad, but I've noticed that there is some new growth coming out right behind it. So that's really exciting. So I hope that this clip helps. And thanks a lot, Jimmy, for giving me the opportunity to show off my beautiful philodendron varicosum dark form. Bye. Hi, guys. I'm Daisy from Daisy in the Jungle. I would like to thank Jimmy so much for giving me the opportunity to be in one of his collab videos. I've always enjoyed watching them, so I'm really excited to be in one. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about one of my favourite philodendrons, the varicosum. So I'm going to start by showing you some of the foliage on this plant because, let's be honest, that's what we all want to see. This is the newest leaf that we've got here. Hopefully you can see that okay. It's got some beautiful veining lovely velvety texture and then round the back we've got that lovely burgundy hue that the varicosum is known for as well as those creepy fairy petioles. The varicosum is hands down one of my favourite philodendrons. It's got so much going on. I love those velvety leaves. The fairy petioles are kind of a marmite thing. You really either love them or hate them. I think they're really cool. And then you've got that lovely rich green on the front with the veining and then that gorgeous burgundy on the back. If you decide to buy yourself a varicosum, I would highly recommend that you really take care of this plant for the first week or so after you get it. They don't seem to ship very well and really I should cut this leaf off but I thought I'd leave it to show you what I meant. Make sure that you keep this plant warm and humid when you first get it. If, like me, you don't have a humidifier, consider keeping this plant in the bathroom or somewhere humid with adequate light. I always give new leaves a little spritz when they start to emerge just to help ease them out a little bit. Like most of my aeroids, I keep this in a really light and airy mix, so it's an equal parts of cocoa coir, perlite, sphagnum moss and bark. I fertilise this with half strength liquid gold leaf every time I water and that way I don't have to try and remember when it was last fertilised. This is definitely a climbing philodendron and I'll be putting this on a pole pretty soon. As you may be able to see here, it's starting to get some more aerial roots and it wants to climb. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing my philodendron varicosum and thanks again Jimmy for letting me be part of this video. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely, again, 
remember to give those uh, people who shared a follow. And again, if you want to share something, you want to step out of your own comfort zone, on camera, off camera, definitely just do it. I'll edit it. I'll make you look good. And I'll share it uh, on episodes where, where I can. So uh, that's it for this one. Uh, Till next time, happy planting.